to use an onsen in Japan. If you're watching this video, chances are you fall into one of three categories of people. One, you're interested in coming to Japan and trying a Japanese hot spring, also known as an onsen, and you've never been in one before. Uh, two, you've been in them before and you really have no idea what to do when you get there. Or three, you thought this thumbnail of this guy in this yukata looked kind of interesting and so you wanted to watch it uh, and see how silly I am. So whichever one of those three you are, stay tuned. I think you'll find this video interesting. So you might be thinking, why should you listen to me about how to use a hot spring? Well, if you're in category one of someone who's never been to Japan and never been in a hot spring, I was like you 10 years ago. I'd never been to Japan. I'd never been to a hot spring. And my wife said, Honey, try it. I think you'll like it. And uh, when I heard that when you go in the hot spring, you don't wear any clothes, frankly, I was kind of mortified by that idea. And I was like, no way, I wouldn't enjoy that. That sounds awful. But I went and I actually really enjoy it. And I've been to Japan a number of times and stayed in some of the uh, best hot spring hotels according to the Japan Tourism Association. And uh, so over those years, I've learned a bit about going into them, what to do, what not to do, and I thought I would share that with you. Uh, this video I'm actually doing at a hot spring hotel. It's the Aino Kaze Hot Spring Hotel. Uh, in um, It's near Kanazawa, Japan. It's in Wakura Onsen. I've got a link to a video review on Aino Kaze and also a number of my favorite onsen hotels in the description of this video. You'll also find links at the end. Japanese onsens typically fall into two categories. Uh, one in large ryokans. A uh, ryokan is a word for traditional Japanese hotel. Uh, or two, public baths. Um, the hotels, typically the onsen is included in your hotel charge. Uh, those hotels will charge not really by the room, but they charge per person. So it's important when you book at an onsen hotel that you say how many people are going to be there because it, it really makes a big difference in the price. Uh, the other category, the public baths, these are typically um, community baths that charge anywhere in the neighborhood of 500 to 1,000 yen, which is somewhere between five and $10. Uh, and that's where the community can go in and enjoy a large a hot spring bath that they might not be able to have into their hotel. Uh, in this video, I'll assume that you're staying at a um, Japanese onsen hotel. Uh, I think that has the best experience because those generally are the nicest uh, onsen facilities. When you check into a onsen hotel, they will give you a yukata, which is what I'm wearing right here. And this is what identifies you as a guest of the hotel. So when you go into the onsen, you don't have to show any room key or identification because you're wearing this. It means you're staying here. So if you think, well, hey, maybe I'll just book the rate for one person and sneak in two or three, uh, that's not going to work because there won't be enough yukatas in your room. And two, at these types of hotels, they physically take you to your room and they also put out a number of beds uh, that equates to the number of people that you booked. So if you booked one, but you've got three, you will only have uh, one place for someone to sleep and you'll only have one dinner provided for you. So you'll have a bunch of people that are uh, tired uh, and hungry. All right, so now that you're in your yukata and you're ready to head down and enjoy the hot spring bath, um, most of these hotels will provide you uh, a bag or a pail or a basket so that you can take some of your things with you down to the spa. Um, the one thing that is almost always in the bag is a towel. And um, we'll come back to that later, but make sure you bring this hand towel with you down to the hot spring and plah, your room key uh, so that you can get back into your room. So when you get down to the actual onsen, um, the hot spring baths, they'll be divided into two sides, one for men and one for women. If you can't identify which one's which because the English isn't there or it's not very good, um, ask somebody because you don't want to end up in the wrong facility. So once you've entered uh, into your gender specific area, uh, the first thing you'll typically do is take off your shoes or your sandals. And depending upon the facility, um, some of them, you will put your sandals in little boxes on the wall. Uh, other times you'll just leave them on the floor before you step up on the tatami mats. If you leave them on the floor, they often will have these little colored numbered clips that you can put onto your sandals to identify that number 22 yellow was yours when you come back. Because when you're staying in the hotel and you're wearing their attire, 
all of the sandals look pretty much the same. So once you've taken off your shoes, you walk in uh, to either a lounge or a locker room. Sometimes the lounge is outside the locker room, sometimes it's in the locker room. The lounge is typically an area for um, lounging and relaxing after you've taken your hot spring baths. They'll often have water or tea to drink in there, which are typically free. After you go through the lounge and go into the locker room area, uh, this is where you change, you disrobe. Uh, so find a locker or a basket. Um, some hotels have big lockers that would be about this size that are big enough for you to put uh, everything you've got with you into. They'll have a key that has a um, loop that you put around your wrist and you take that with you into the hot spring because um, that's the key that locks up all your stuff and that way nobody can take it. Uh, sometimes they'll provide small lockers which are only big enough for you to put your key into. In that case you'd put the rest of your clothes and things like that into a basket. And remember the basket or the location of it so you can come back and find your clothes. Um, when I say you want to put everything you brought with you, well, everything except your towel. Your towel is very important, your small hand towel. Bring your hand towel with you out of the locker room into the bath area. So when you leave the locker room and you head to the bath area, the first thing you'll come into is actually a shower area. You take a shower before you get in the bath. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, Chris, what if I've already taken a shower? That's nice. You will be taking a shower again. Everybody who comes to the hot spring bath takes a shower before they go into the bath because they want to keep the water clean. That's part of the reason why you don't wear any clothes is they don't want the clothes to dirty the water either. Um, when you get to the showers, there'll be uh, often little sometimes stalls or sometimes they're not even stalls and they're just right next to each other. But a common theme is that they will all have stools in the shower that look usually something like this. And this is a stool that you sit on. You sit while you are taking a shower. You do not stand, you sit. You sit on this stool. The thing that will often be on top of the stool is something like this, which is a bucket. And this bucket is for you to fill up with water and put it over your head when you want to wash your hair or you can put your towel in it to get it all soapy and then use it to um, essentially wash yourself in the shower. So once you've taken a shower and you're nice and clean, then you want to put the shower into a state that it was when you got there. So you'll want to um, take hot water from the shower and hose off the stool, clean off this, and then often put the bucket on top of the stool like this. And now you're ready to go in to the bath. Take your towel with you, um, but when you take your towel with you and you go to the bath, the towel is never to enter the bath. It is for you to kind of have on your head or around your neck, but never to put in the bath water. Some people put it on the side of the bath, but if you want to be particularly Japanese, many Japanese people put the towels up on top of their head. It uh, keeps the towel away from the water keeps the towel so it's not touching the side of the bath, and it has the added effect of keeping you a little cool with the evaporative cooling of the towel. So now that you've got your towel up on your head, it's time to go into one of the baths in the hot spring water. Uh, they will typically be two types of baths at many hot spring hotels, um, a big indoor one, and then typically a smaller outdoor one. Uh, my preference are the outdoor ones, because I find the indoor ones, I just get too hot too quickly. Um, but uh, I, sometimes it's interesting to just try out different baths, you know, try out the indoor one, try out the outdoor one. If you get too hot, a lot of onsen hotels will have baths that have um, cold water as well. So you can go from the hot bath to the cold bath um, all the time, keeping your towel up here. And while you're in the bath, <clears throat> don't, um, don't scrub because the bath is simply for uh, soaking and relaxing. So once you've had your soak and you've relaxed and you're ready to get out and leave, uh, go take a shower again because now you're going to be really hot. You'll need to rinse off the onsen water, cool down a little bit. Um, before you enter back into the locker room, you use your small towel again 
to wipe off the excess water that's on your body, wring it out. That way when you go back into the locker room, you don't drip. When you go back into the locker room, typically the first thing uh, when you come in the doors, there will be larger towels that you can use to actually dry yourself off. There will be a basket that you can place the towel once you are done using it. Um, then there will be the salon area in the locker room. And the salon area is an area that has um, hair dryers, combs, um, aftershave, lotion, uh, all the things that you might need, toothbrushes, all the things you might need to really make yourself look presentable after getting out of the onsen. Um, so once you've used the salon, then you go back to the locker, take the key off your wrist, put on your clothes, put on your yukata. Remember to put your yukata on the right way, which is the right side of the yukata goes on your body first, and then the left side over it. Um, take your towel, put it back in your bag or your pail, and uh, then you'll be really relaxed, and uh, you'll have had a good time in your onsen in Japan. So, I hope this video was helpful to you. I hope if you are thinking about going to an onsen and you've never been in one before, that you do it because uh, they're a really amazing experience, really relaxing. Um, and uh, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, then please subscribe for new videos every Sunday, or you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Links are in the description below. And if you're thinking about going to a hot spring hotel, well, here are four of my favorite hot spring hotels in Japan. Um, click on any of the links to see my video reviews of those hotels. All right, bye-bye.